Today I'm chatting with David Fadawa of Inventrite about how inventors can find licensing deals and what the PCT, the Patent Corporation Treaty, has to do with it. All right, let's get started off. Um, we have Rolf on today. Rolf, tell me a little bit about what you do. Yeah, I'm a patent attorney in Cologne, Germany, and uh, we handle lots of patents and trademarks, about six and a half thousand patents and four and a half thousand trademarks for mostly medium-sized and smaller clients. Some larger clients, but mostly medium and smaller clients. Mostly domestic clients from Germany, some international clients also from the US or from Japan or China. And we mostly do the prosecution of trademarks and patents. So that's, that's our main business. Okay, and how, how long have you been uh, practicing? I uh, got my, I became patent attorney in 2007, so I'm doing ten that years. for 10 years now, so yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's very <laughs> and cool. And my major was chemistry, actually. I got a PhD in chemistry and then I started in, in the industry a little bit, uh, like being just a chemist in a nanotechnology startup, and then I studied law and became a patent attorney and that's what I am now. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm probably going to have some questions for you a little bit later on because uh, I get a lot of students that ask chemistry related, you know, how do I patent this chemical compound? And right. so that's something I want to get into later, but first I want to touch on, you know, because the, the, the big topic or what we talk about with our students is when they start talking internationally, we start saying, all right, you know, the PCT is the way to go. And I mean, you know, what, what are your thoughts on the PCT? Well, the PCT is a treaty that makes it really easy to get protection in many countries in the world. I think like 150 at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, and it's not, com not as expensive as filing a patent application in each, the, uh, in each of these countries. But on the other hand, it, it's not really um, something that leads to a granted patent. So uh, after um, in a total of two and a half years after the first filing date of your first patent application, you would have to uh, enter the national phase or regional phase of um, all these different countries where you want protection. And mm -hmm. then you would have to pay uh, for the prosecution in these countries anyways. So. In my personal view, it's easy to get protection in many countries or get the chance for protection in all these countries. But on the other hand, you're just paying a couple thousand bucks for just buying time in, I mean, in um, as the essence. So you just uh, get one and a half more years uh, time for a couple thousand uh, dollars. So yeah, I, my, my clients sometimes file a PCT directly or actually quite often because after one year, after the 12 uh, months of the priority year, they mm -hmm. are really undecided where they need protection or maybe they don't have the money to enter all the um, granting procedures uh, in the different countries. Um, but if I have clients that really made up their mind what countries are important and they have the money, then I recommend to directly go into these countries for the granting procedures because, um, well, they save the money for the PCT and directly go there. So you save time, you save money um, if you made up your mind and have enough money after 12 months. So um, especially for smaller inventors or sole inventors, uh, maybe mm, in my point of view, and that's your strong point, we come uh, back to this later in this video, um, the best is to find an investor or um, some monetization quickly uh, so you have enough money to enter into the granting procedures in the different countries directly. So. Yeah, that's my like the summary of my <laughs> the <laughs> essence of what I think about PCT. It has good and bad sides. And well, the thing is, I love I love how you broke that down because, um, you know, it, it was, you know, even even you just explaining it like that, it, it comes across so simply that really the PCT is just buying time, right. and it's nothing more. And I think a lot of inventors and even me at a time looked at it as, well, you know, I'm, I'm going out and getting protection in all these countries, but 
in reality, it's just buying time so that you can protect yourself in these countries. Um, and so it's it's trading dollars for time, you know. Right. Uh, so I, I love that analogy. I love how you broke it down into like a 60 second, simple, straightforward. <laughs> and um, and the, the bad thing is that a lot of my colleagues, like the other patent attorneys, they say, oh, you must do PCT because they earn tons of money with PCT. You know, mm -hmm. the, the official fees are a couple thousand uh, dollars. So um, then it's easy for them to also charge a couple of thousand <laughs> because it doesn't really make a big difference anymore. And they don't really do anything. You know, I if I file PCT, I just um, basically file a patent application a form with, mm -hmm. for example, the European Patent Office, and that's it. I don't do a lot work, and uh, I can charge a lot of money. So a lot of my colleagues, they really strongly recommend you must get PCT. But, you know, I, I feel uncomfortable with that. You know, <laughs> I, I tell everyone openly, okay, here's the trade-off. You have to pay tons of money, you get time, but if you made up your mind and you want to go straight to the different countries, better do that. So, so you're kind of saying this, uh, <laughs> you know, you're, you're burning, burning bridges for your colleagues here. Oh, <laughs> you're you're well. throwing them under the bus. <laughs> I'm just but trying to great. be honest. <laughs> no, and, and that's the thing. Like this, this industry, because inventors are so driven by passion and excitement that you know anybody with a little bit more knowledge can tell them anything. You know, you can tell them. I, hey, you know, file this, file that, file this, and they'll believe you. And so I, I love it, the fact that you're kind of shooting them straight and saying, I'm, I can make a lot of money on a PCT and it's not always needed because really all you're doing is buying yourself time. So get strategic. Right. And I just think that's the, the coolest, like when you <laughs> find a patent attorney that has that kind of attitude, stick with them. Um, you know, I, I have a patent attorney here in the US and that's his attitude, he, he points me straight. and so. Uh, I love that. So thank you so much for kind of bringing that to the table and, and showing people that it's really just buying time and attorneys make a lot of money. So well, don't maybe, always believe maybe there's one one more advantage um, because you can uh, when you when you first file your patent application and mm -hmm. uh, it's always good to have a really solid, good, well crafted and drafted patent application. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe within the 12 months of the priority year, you get new ideas, you develop your idea further and you have new features, cooler features and so on. And then you can add these features to the PCT application. They will not have the priority of the first patent application and you should not make them part of the first claim. But you can add claims with these additional features and you can uh, add sections to the description for these additional features. And, uh, and then when you file the PCT, um, typically a, a well-known patent office, for example, in the US it will be the USPTO or in Europe it will be the European Patent Office, they will uh, do an additional examination on these, uh, on the claim, on all claims, on, so also on additional claims. So, well, you don't only buy time, you also buy an additional examination and if you add claims, then you get an, an additional examination and search for these claims. So there is a little bit additional value as well. So yeah, if, if you extend your patent application when filing the PCT. But when you file the PCT, those claims don't take all the way back to the original priority date. Right. Correct. <clears throat> right. Correct. Okay. All right, if but you would have to use them to limit your application later on in the granting procedure, mm -hmm. the resulting claim would not enjoy the priority of your first application. But that's not so bad because mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a new idea you had and probably there is not many people who, who have shown that or used that in the meantime. It would, be, would mm -hmm. have been really, you know, uh, it's uh, unlikely. So. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a strategy to, to not file a second complete new patent application, but just have your additional ideas added to the original application in the PCT application, basically. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So it, uh, you can not only buy time, but you can also expand the scope of your, your claims. Right. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. Um, so that's kind of boils down into a nutshell the advantages and disadvantages of the PCT. Right. 
And then um, once you have the, uh, I already mentioned that um, maybe in your first priority year you should find investors and find money and um, to, to finance the PCT or to finance the granting procedures in all these different countries. And that's your mm -hmm. strong point, right? I mean, that, that's your main business, correct? Yeah, it is. And well, it's not, not exactly investors, but it is investors because um, what, what we do at InventRay is we teach people to go find companies that are going to take it to market and take it to market in a big way um, and if they are international companies, then they do look into the PCT. And so it's not that they're going to find specifically investors to invest money so that the inventor can execute it, but going to find companies that want to take it to market so that they can uh, develop a revenue stream of royalties off of that product. Right. So, so then they will have enough money to, you know, uh, find protection in all these different countries. So how do you approach uh, the companies who in take licenses or you know invest in the inventors or uh, how do you go about that? Uh, how do you do that? So um, one, of the, one of the really cool parts I think I guess is that we work the company after we found them and I'll jump back to that but um, when you find a company and you start working with them, you can actually get them to pay for your patents and make the investment so that you're not coming out of pocket for those patents. And if the company says, hey, we need international patents, then they start to bring in legal counsel or they give the inventor money uh, up front to start paying for the PCT and all the other international filings that are needed, obviously depending on a patent strategy that's developed. Um, cool. And so to get back to your original question about the how to find the companies this is it's it's almost it's very simple and so when you have your widget you develop the the product and you look at it and say all right i want this to sell at a walmart or a target or whatever retailer you see as being the company that you want to have it on the shelves well mm -hmm. all we do is tell students all right go go to the shelf where you want your product and go and take the packages of all the products that are around there, flip them over, and make a list of those companies. Ah, okay. And cool. so the, the value of a potential licensee or somebody to license your product is their distribution chain. And so we say, mm -hmm. go to where it's distributed and find all the companies there. And that's where you find the list of companies to start to bring your product to life. Mm-hmm. And then you help them to contact these companies but because some, I, I, I know that from my own experience, some sole inventors or in general some inventors are really, you know, focused on their, on their ideas and their inventions and they are, yeah, kind of geeks and maybe a little shy mm -hmm. and not so outspoken and maybe they are afraid of approaching, let's say, all these retailers and these kinds of companies. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, that's that's one of our strong suits, I think, is developing the confidence in people because that's really what it is. And um, a lot of intro inventors are introverts. They are, um, you know, they have a more difficult time reaching out to companies. And right. so we, we try to help them instill confidence, not only in themselves, but in their product. And so we show them, hey, let's develop a marketing piece, uh, a little 30 to 60 second commercial or a sell sheet, depending on the product. We help them develop that. And then we show them, all right, you know, you can file some preliminary or provisional patent application, a PPA, so that you're protected. So now when the inventor goes out to the companies and we have uh, scripts and we practice them, we have uh, 11 coaches that we have that coach people directly through and they get on the phone with students and they say, all right, you know, say this and we pretend and, and like role play out the conversation. And so once they finally get to that uh, potential licensee and they pitch it, they have confidence in their pitch, they have confidence in their protection, they have confidence in what they're saying. And so when they come across to them, you know, they say, hey, you know, I'm a product developer. Do you guys look at new products? And they're like, yeah, we do send stuff here. And the inventor is just so geeked. We get so many calls every day like, hey, I got in. They're looking at my product. Like, this is mm, real great. now. <laughs> and 
you know, that's, that's just the fun of being a coach and, and helping students yeah. get to that next level. So how do you finance yourself? Do you take a share of the revenue or do they pay you a fixed price or how do they approach you? Like how, what's your, what's the model? Yep. Um, we do a, uh, fixed, fixed fee upfront. Uh, we don't take a percentage off the back end of their products. And so, um, you know, that's, that's basically, we don't, we don't want to muddy the waters of, you know, who owns what, what, uh, value we gave we want the inventor we're, we're completely 100 education and that's how we've been and we found that we get students licensing products every week and uh, we found that model really really has worked well for us yeah great okay that's cool for my uh, listeners on my channel to know probably because some I mean about 30 percent of my Uh, subscribers come from the US so <laughs> it oh. might be very interesting <laughs> yeah very cool very cool so yeah I mean the I guess the invent rate way is just an educational process and uh, you know we we love helping inventors we love putting putting inventors up on on the board and saying hey you know these are one of our students and all these products on the market have come from invent rate students so it's kind of it's fun Uh... So when, when an inventor approaches you um, and they didn't file a patent application yet, how do you consult them? You know, of course they can write their own patent application, but if they write their own patent application, maybe there are weaknesses in the patent application and then later on there's problems in the prosecution and so on. So how do you, how do you go about that? So we, we have, we have, uh, provisional patent application software that we had that was written mm -hmm. by an attorney um, that helps inventors through that process and basically asks them questions because uh, you know the, the bigger percentage of products don't work out and mm -hmm. so we don't we, we didn't set up the system so that inventors would be investing in a lot of intellectual property right off the bat but what we do say is go through this software get a provisional patent application mm -hmm. so that you're comfortable pitching. Once you go out and pitch it and companies start coming and coming to you and saying, hey, we're interested in this, we want to know more. Then we say, reach out to a patent attorney, show them mm -hmm. your what you filed and consult with them and say, hey, you know, is this good enough protection? And if they say, no, we got to refile something, then all right, at least you know there's interest, at least you know that there's a possibility right. of money coming out of this. But mm -hmm. early on, there's so many projects that fail at that first phase that we never saw it worth it to go and, and get, you know, two to five to ten thousand dollars invested in intellectual property right off the bat. Uh, but I understand. File right. it. File I mean, it that, and that's, a, that's a really big hurdle for a lot of inventors to mm -hmm. invest so much money in a patent application in mm -hmm. the very beginning. On the other hand, if you don't file a patent application, then you're not protected against Uh, you know, um, investors who just copy you when once they once you told them what the idea is. <laughs> mm -hmm. And right. one of the things we found is that inventors in the early stages know the most about their product, and a lot of them have uh, an inability to communicate it to a patent attorney very well because they don't understand how to communicate with a patent attorney early on in an inventor's career. And so we found right. that a lot of times the inventor is the best person to write that initial PPA so that they can get it down on paper their thoughts and then when they mm -hmm. can turn it over to a patent attorney the patent attorney will understand it instead of having an inventor get on the phone with an attorney and have them kind of explain it verbally and then the patent attorney's got to figure it out well this preliminary work that's done really boils down all right what is the patentable nature of this here it is patent attorney what do you think And it, mm -hmm. it gives the patent attorney a leg up to say, yes, we need to refile or we need to, uh, or this is great. You know, you did a great job and let's keep going forward with this. Right. Yeah. My, in my personal experience, there's, if an um, inventor writes, um, if they are writing their own patent application, sometimes, you know, they don't have the experience, how mm -hmm. to write the claims, how yep. to get the essence of the invention compared to the prior art and how to you need to differentiate the core of the invention from the prior yep. art correctly and so on. And then it, later on, it, at least in Europe, it's very difficult to um, correct these mistakes. 
But as far as I know, in the US, um, the requirement for you know added subject matter um, is maybe a little less strict as in in Europe. My 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 feeling, my personal feeling. So. So yes, maybe that that is a helpful strategy that you have uh, in for the mm -hmm. for people in the U.S. for inventors, right? Yeah, and from what I yeah. what I understand of the European patent system and the U.S. patent system, it is a it's a I don't want to say a little bit more open in the U.S., but it's you know if if let's say the patent attorney files their own provisional patent application, goes out and pitches to companies. And then there's interest companies like hey we want this then they go to an attorney and the attorney says hey you know this is not this is not done well we need to refile then mm -hmm. they would just refile another ppa mm -hmm. and it would it would obviously change their priority date and a lot of the times companies want to be involved and help with the filing of that intellectual property yes so mm -hmm. it's not that right. the company would steal it but they want to say hey you know we want to start looking at the manufacturing of this so that when we file more intellectual property it's more on point with what we're actually bringing to market right well uh, thank you very much david um that was very exciting uh, your your point of view how to get money for uh, for sole inventors or for smaller inventors mm -hmm. and how to monetize your inventions thank you yeah and thank you so much i love and and what you've said about the PCT, I'm going to take that back to my community and and let everybody know, like, hey, this is this is what Rolf had to say: the disadvantages and advantages. You're buying time, <laughs> you're adding value, but at the same time, you're paying for it. So I love that. So right. thank you so much uh, for that addition to you know our repertoire of knowledge and understanding of the PCT. Right. So subscribers of David, subscribe to my channel. Subs my subscribers. Subscribe to David's channel. The links are below the video. So thank you, David. Thank you so much. And if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and want to find out more about patents, trademarks and designs, please subscribe to my channel. If you like the video, hit like. I'm answering comments and questions below this video. And most importantly, protect your ideas and go make them count.